Hey everybody, today I'll be talking through my entire board game collection. So I try to do one of these videos every single year just to give you guys an idea about what stayed and what has moved on. Now I have got around 200 games here to go through, so I'll try to be as rapid as I can and not get caught up in too many details. But before I get started on the games, I want to give a shout out to the show's sponsor, keyender.co.uk, who are my go-to online retailer when it comes to purchasing board games here in the UK. And if you use my link in the show notes or the QR code, code then you can get five percent off your first order but let's get cracking i'm going to start with this um little shelf here so we're going to start with el caballero which is the tile placement version of el grande a very overlooked game but pretty good and uh, we've got spirium this one's a recent game that impressed me kind of a worker placement game as you're putting workers between the cards you want and that can kind of re result in getting money or paying more or less for the cards you want really interesting game there Capital Lux 2, one of the best card-driven games out there. In fact, it's pretty. It's a top 15, top 20 game for me. Um, it's absolutely outstanding. Acropolis, one of the big hits from 2022 for me. Very simple family weight tile placement game. Um, same goes with Nova Luna, lovely Uwe Rosenberg, a puzzle game that feels quite different to any other game out there. Um, Need of Valir, we've got Cascadia and Rumble Nation. So if you watch my um, What's Hitting the Table content regularly, you'll probably know I play this game quite a lot. Very interesting game. It's a um, an Asian design game but it's um it's so good but sadly it's not widely available but if you can track down a copy of this one I highly recommend uh, you get it so below this we have a very short shelf here with Glenmore 2 Chronicles because the box shape is quite awkward still the best tile placement game out there um, and also Keyflower um, a brilliant auction um, kind of a bidding yeah bidding tile placement game um, and worker placement as well a great hybrid game there uh, below this, we have most of my kind of um, medium to medium heavyweight Euros. So we've got Underwater Cities, um, brilliant engine building game that's kind of trumped quite a few games in my collection, actually, because um, this is kind of a one-stop shop for engine building. We have Twa, um, absolute classic, very dry, um, which you'll probably see with a lot of these games. Dice Driven Euro. Um, Forenze by Andreas Stedding. This is like a, probably the best example of a, um, I call it incentive building style game as you, you know, the more you neglect things, the more they build up an incentive for other people to take things. And you're building towers and there's some pretty nasty things going on here, but it does hold up really well for an older game. Uh, Brussels 1893. One of the best worker placement games out there. Again, another kind of kitchen sink of mechanisms, but one that holds together so well. Uh, Citrus, massively overrated, oh, sorry, underrated, not overrated. Tile placement game, quite abstract in the way it works, but really tense as well. And we have Grand Austria Hotel, a brilliant dice drafter. Newton, another really solid, well-rounded Euro there. Uh, Lorenzo Il Magnifico, one of my favorite worker placement games and engine building games as well. Uh, Hansa Teutonica, an absolute classic, and Terra Mystica. Um, so Terra Mystica has actually beaten some other games out of my collection, such as Boon Lake, um, and I was quite apprehensive to pick this one up at first because I thought it was going to be way heavier than what it was, but it's actually pretty easy to play and it's a hell of a lot of fun. Below this, we have The Magnificent, so another dice drafting game there. A really cool game, actually. Impressed me last year, despite me not wanting to or not being terribly interested in the first place. But I've really come to love these designers. Uh, Tinner's Trail, a Martin Wallace bidding game. Really fun. Uh, we have the kind of what's your game, uh, or kind of a quadrilogy of what's your game designs here, even though this one is the uh, Rio Grande edition. But we have Signorie, Zanguo, Nippon, and Vasco da Gama. Now you can actually see that Vasco da Gama is in the cellophane here because I actually used to own this game and I sold it and I regretted doing so and I bought it back again because I was quite intrigued to play it one more time. But these are pretty heavy Euros, especially these two, but I've got content um, released on both of them and they're so um, interesting in the way they work and they're quite unlike anything else out there. So if you like your heavyweight Euros, these two are really ones to look at. The rules aren't too bad, but the decisions are so crunchy. And we have a few, a few Suki designs here now. So we've got Pulsar 2849, probably one of the only sci-fi games I have in my collection, but still another wonderful um, kind of dice-driven Euro. Um, a Praga Caput Reni, one of my favorite games of all time. Just a brilliant kind of, um, with loads of mechanisms going on here, loads of kind of chaining actions together, and it's just really satisfying. The most recent of them is Woodcraft, more dice-driven games here. You can see that I love my dice-driven Euros, um, especially when they are like mid medium to medium heavyweight uh, kind of brackets, I suppose. Uh, Istanbul, I have an evergreen game that I've played for years and years and years, and I still love it. Uh, below this shelf, we have a few more. These are kind of more of the Italian designer games here. 
We've got Sulk in the Mine Calendar, um, actually the first Euro game I ever played. Uh, Teletum, which is the newest one. Um, we've got Coimbra, uh, Trismegistus, which is probably my favourite out of all of them. Um, definitely the heaviest, and I need to be in the right mood to play it because it's quite full on. But when you put that effort in, it really does pay off. Um, and another Martin Wallace game here with Anno 1800. An interesting kind of um, contract fulfilment game with a weird tempo, actually. And kind of my main Alexander Fister game, it might even be the only one I own right now, that is Maracaibo, the best one uh, by far. And under this one, we have a few smaller games with Seven Wonders Jewel, you know, absolute classic. Uh, we've got Agricola, All Creatures Big and Small. I've barely played this one. I thought it was okay, but it is my brother's game. Uh, we've got Mandala, so one of the best two-player games ever. Uh, Lost Cities, another classic two-player one. Same goes with Tramban, Arboretum. Um, I actually played this one recently, um, which was a long delay after when I played it the last time. Um, really intense game. Um, I re very rarely feel like playing it, but when I do, it, it's just brilliant. And we've got Rajas of the Ganges, the Dice Charmers, which is just like the board game, but better in rolled and write form. Furnace and Biblios, another great um, filler game there. So let's move on to the next shelf. And this is probably my most interesting bookcase. Um, at the top here, we have most of the Stefan Feld games that I own. There are a few more from the um, City Collection. We have Luna, Bonfire, Trajan, uh, Aquasphere, the Oracle of Delphi, uh, In the Year of the Dragon, the Castles of Burgundy, and Bora Bora. So, you know, if you watch my content, you're going to know that I'm a huge Stefan Feld fan, and these are all just uh, the cream of the crop for me, the best of the best, and they're all absolutely brilliant. These are all like eights and nines, even 10 out of 10s for me when it comes to Trajan. So yeah, if you love Stefan Feld games, um, you know, come to my house and we'll play a game. Um, we also have Puerto Rico, um, absolute Again, amazing game that still holds up brilliantly. I'm um, considered one of the best ever, and I believe oh, I completely agree with that. And Ra. So I actually used to have the, I think it was the Fantasy Flight version of Ra. When, um, well, and I got rid of that one, and I bought this one because I prefer the box shape, and it goes with all my other Alea games. So I actually think this version is a bit nicer, despite being a bit more beige, I suppose. And below this, we have some really interesting games. We have Kalamala, which is actually a Fabio Lopiano game. That's quite hard to come by now, and I'm so glad I've got a copy because this is such a kind of a simple area majority game with some really cool twists on it. That action selection system is fantastic, um, and I believe there might be a reprint coming out sooner or later. Um, Shipyard, another Vladimir Suki game that's pretty much um, like gold dust. You can't really get this one. Same goes for First Class, which is the kind of um, the card version of Russian Railroads, which I do have in my collection, which you'll see shortly. Um, Mimi's, a brilliant worker placement game, very tight, based on running an ant colony. So a theme that's not really used or seen very often, and it works really well, and it should be used more. East, probably one of the biggest surprises I've played over the last five years or so. Absolutely outstanding kind of bidding and bluffing game. Uh, Kalos, one of the best worker placement games ever. You know, needless to say, there's nothing else to, to say about that one. Um, these two games here I've, I've played semi-recently and they are absolutely brilliant. So this is Scylla and Assyria. And you can see that all these games here are from the Istari line. Now, this line of games are so good and they just kind of faded into obscurity over the years and they hold up brilliantly. And it's probably some of my favourite Euros, actually, and really do fit that sweet spot on what I enjoy playing. And um, we have Goa here, another game that's sadly out of print. Um, actually, a really good Dawn design. It's quite unlike its other games as you are acquiring these tiles and you know, pushing up tracks and things. Great game. Um, and also go for St. Petersburg, one of the rarest games I have in my collection. A brilliant engine building game that's you know, fo uh, focused on card play. Uh, below this, we have some other games here with um, Vikings by um, Michael Kiesling. Probably his my favourite game of his that he's done by himself. What a brilliant family weight game that is. It should be in print, but I don't know why it isn't. It should be. Uh, we have Docmus. This is not actually a Rhino Knizia game, even though it does feel like a Rhino Knizia game as you are building roots and things. Really interesting. Um, Babylonia, my favourite Knizia game. Uh, we have Las Vegas Royale, another really good dawn there. Brilliant fun. A dice rolling, trying to get majorities with what you roll. Chinatown, one of the most interactive games I have. Um, actually broke into the top 10 for me this year. Negotiation game done perfectly. Uh, Municipium was my biggest surprise, a pleasant surprise of 2022. An older game, but you know I played it for the first time in 2022. And it is 
outstanding at area majority game that's quite unlike anything else out there. And recently I picked up Quo Vadis as well, another negotiation game from Knizia. Um, some really interesting things there. And there is going to be a reprint called Zoo Vadis out soon, but I prefer the old Roman kind of Senate theme. Below this, we have a lot of smaller games here, some filler games and card games and things. We have Loading. So this is a game that really did fly under the radar. A real-time game, it kind of plays a bit like The Mind, but competitively, as you're kind of filtering through this deck of cards and trying to um, gain points by playing them in numerical order, but you can't go back on yourself. And you can even play cards in other people's stacks to, um, to get extra points. Floriferous, lovely filler. Um, Skull, multiplayer, bluffing game, really good. The Cabo, uh, we've got Elements, we have Lock. This is an interesting party game that's quite, you know, it's quite traditional in the way it plays, um, but it works really well for like family settings. Uh, Kaching, a two player only game there that's getting massively overlooked, just lost to the annals of time. Um, really tense drafting. We have Hounded. Now, this game I've only actually played once, I think. And this is a game about fox hunting um, that's, you know, a really cool theme, but I thought the game was you know, somewhat wanting. Um, Par uh, photograph, really tense game. This almost feels like Arboretum in that I do really enjoy the design, but I do need to be in the right mood to play it because it is so tense. Our vegetable stock, lovely little commodity speculation game that takes around you know, 15 minutes. We've got a few oink games here with um, startups. We have Scout, uh, Mask Men, and more party game here with Insider, but these three are absolutely brilliant. Now, I'm not normally the biggest or the biggest fanboy of Oink games like a lot of people are, but these three, I have to say, are just objectively fantastic. Matryoshka, which is quite an interesting set collection game. Um, uh, to check it out, I think I've done a review on this one. And most recently, I think this is the newest game on the shelf. This is A Gift of Tulips, nice little um, kind of a push and pull set collection game there. Uh, below this, more filler games, tiny box games here with Splitter, um, Ohanami, one of the best filler games out there. Pungi, we have Six Nymphed, Coloretto, uh, No Thanks. No, these are all essentials. Um, Streets, I'm surprised we've still got this one because I don't really rate it too highly. These Sinister Fish games are, I think they're a bit lackluster. Um, we have uh, Boomerang. I think this is the Australia uh, edition because there's quite a few of those. And we have a couple of the Button Shy games with um, Sprawlopolis and... Agropolis, um, and with all the expansion content, that's just a deck of cards. And the classic Telestrations, um, a go-to party game there. And below this, more kind of party games with Fiesta uh, de los Muertos. This is kind of a word association game where you're trying to you know, give clues and get these characters. It's relatively good. Uh, QE, um, economic party game, really cool game. Uh, unusual Suspects, uh, Trap Words, We've got Letter Jam, uh, Decrypto, uh, so Clover, just one. And we've got a Game of Thrones Betwixt. Now, this is a game I wasn't really expecting to like. But it's actually really good. It's quite chaotic, um, a bidding game, but I mainly got it because of the Game of Thrones theme. Um, but um, the actual game holds up quite well. And uh, we've got Time's Up. I've not actually played this one, so I'm quite um, I'm quite itching to play it. Um, the Resistance Avalon and Tifa Tashin, which was the original version of a game called Good Critters, which I believe is a Dice Towers Essential, but... This is the original version, which I think is a much cooler theme based on these kind of corrupt politicians. And it's, um, it's a much cooler one. So that's, uh, that's Kiefer Tashin. On top of this shelf and going on to the next one, we have a few games I'm wanting to, just, wanting to sell here. We've got uh, Stevenson's Rocket, Mordemarosa and Varuna. Uh, these are all my games that I've yet to play. Uh, we've got Lofferton, uh, Galanus, uh, Mosaic, uh, Olympos from the Astari game line. Um, we've got the expansion for Seven Wonders Jewel. This is the Agora one. I've already played the Pantheon one. Uh, we've got Royal Realms here, which has um, very kindly been um, passed on to me to, re to review by uh, an independent publisher called Hobby Doctor. It looks good. I've not played it yet. Uh, we have Anachrony, uh, Lignum, the Princes of Florence, uh, Golden Ages, Agra, a Kraftwagen, uh, Iki, Madeira, a Game of Thrones, which I've had for years and not had a chance to play, um, Dungeon Pets, Cooper Island, Sierra West, Archipelago, uh, Dragon's Gate College, uh, First Contact, and Robo Rally. So I have played Robo Rally, but it's such an awkward shaped box that it has to uh, it has to stay here. On top of that, we have Arcadia, one of the original Really Good Dawn games, I believe, and Quest, which is the newer version of the Resistance Avalon, and with a few rules tweaks. And I've got a few extras here as well. 
such as the new expansion content for Newton. Um, this is a new board for Newton. And this is the new expansion stuff for Barrage. So yeah, that's all been recently fulfilled by Cranio Creations. Um, and a few extra bits here, such as new cards for um, Newton. More stuff for Newton, and this is the expansion stuff for Cooper Island, if I ever get round to playing it. And that's for Gutenberg, which I need to uh, to move on. So below this, we have my kind of main Kallax. And going back to Stefan Fell games now. So these are the three games from the um, City Collection that I own. We have Hamburg, Amsterdam, and Marrakesh. So Hamburg is Bruges, or was Bruges. Amsterdam was Macau, and Marrakesh is a new one. Really need to play Marrakesh um, soon. Um, because, you know, I did play it originally, I really liked it, and um, I kind of forgot the rules, and I've had to relearn it again. But these rules are fresh in my mind, and I want to get them back to the table very soon. Some more classics here with Mexica by um, by Wolfgang Kramer. Um, we have Peloponnese, brilliant kind of disaster mitigation game, um, so much fun. Uh, Brass Birmingham, you know, absolute classic Wallace design there. Um, Tigris and Euphrates, and Sealand, another game that's Massively overlooked, um, should be played more. Lovely, charming design by Wolfgang Kramer. Um, and some bigger games here, some bigger box games with Ultimate Rail Railroads. So despite being one of my favourite games ever, I've still only played the Russian Railroads map, so I do need to try those new ones. We have Barrage, you know, top three game for me. Outstanding. And the Rococo Deluxe Edition. Beautiful, um, beautiful production there. Um, and... Onto this one here then. So these are the awkward shaped box, you know, these Concordia shaped flat boxes. We've got um, Concordia and Navigador by Mac Gertz. Then we've got Samurai. So this is the older edition of Samurai here by Rio Grande. I love this game. Um, we have Freedom and Freezes and um, Fast Sloths, Power Grid and Fium. So um, I actually really like Fe Freedom and Freeze as a designer. Um, Fast Sloths is like a simple family weight racing game with probably the best, best cover of all time. Uh, we have uh, Power Grids, obviously, um, most of you guys know what that one is, economic game. And Fium is one that really did fly under the radar. It kind of has a card system similar to Concordia, but you cannot just take them all back. You have to pay to take back extra cards. Very fascinating game there. And um, you know, the more I play it, the more I like it. And next to this, we have some more family weight games with Picture Perfect, um, My Farm Shop, which is kind of the less popular version of a game like Space Space, but it's way better. Caesar's Empire, one of my favourite games, if not my favourite game of 2022. Um, El Dorado, or the Quest for El Dorado, which is the um, Riley Knizia deck building racing game. Works really nicely, actually. It's really grown on me um, over, or the more I play it. Uh, we've got Garum, um, very beige looking game, but really cool kind of abstract tile placement game there that's a lot of fun. Sadly, doesn't scale too well. Um, it's great at three and four, but not very great at two. And next to this, we have some big box games with El Grande, the big box, um, Wallenstein, in a big war game there. Brilliant um, use of the cube tower. And below that, my I think it's my final Steffenfeld game uh, with Amerigo, one of my favorites, actually. And below this, we have a couple of more queen games with Bastille and Speculation. Bastille, I think, is okay. Pretty entry level worker placement game. Speculation was it's fun in bigger groups. Uh, again, a simple economic game. And to the right of this, we have Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. We really need to finish this one off. We only got a few missions left to go. Um, Acquire um, Libertalia, the original one that looks way better than the uh, the newer one. Um, the Search for Planet X and Escape from the Aliens from Outer Space. This um, Calyx Cube is empty. And below this, we have uh, the Chamber of Wonders, which is a recently fulfilled Kickstarter game. We've only played it once, so we need to play it some more. Um, and the big box version of Museum, which came out after a long, long delay, and we haven't played it since. And more party games here with Crossed Words, you know, one of my favourites, and Boulder Dash, which I haven't played yet. Um, Tags, another word association game, When I Dream, Wits and Wages, and Cross Clues. Onto the final shelf then, and this is where most of my lighter games are. Uh, most of these fillers at the top here are you know, very accessible. So we have um, Push, one of my favorite Push Your Luck games. Um, we've got Long Shot, the dice game, brilliant racing game there for, I think it plays up to eight players or so, really, really great fun. And uh, we've got Chiseled, this is kind of a deck deconstruction game. It's okay, oh, I like the concept, but the gameplay isn't great. Um, classic bidding game with High Society. Um, Rustling Leaves, 
We've got High Score, very simple dice rolling game. Um, Hex Roller, Stellar and Subastral. These are brilliant card games. This is kind of like the two-player version of this one, but they're different enough to own uh, to warrant having them both. Um, yeah, really solid and probably somewhat overlooked um, filler games. Break the Code. This is a brain burnery deduction game. It's very good, but it, again, you do need to have um, the mental capacity to play it. Um, Hokkaido. This one's a fine drafting game. I'm not too keen on it. Um, Sleuth, classic deduction game. Um, Age of War. This is like a Yahtzee variant by Knizia. Um, District Noir. This is one that I've acquired for my two-player collection recently. Um, really cool Japanese game. Um, this is kind of a reskin of a game called Throne in Grail, if you were familiar with that. Um, really recommend this one. Uh, Dandelions, not a big fan, and Archaeology is a set collection game. And below this, we have more fillers with uh, Fugitive. Um, I haven't played this one in a while. Um, Mantis Falls, I believe this is a two or three player deduction game, or social deduction game that I haven't tried yet. So yeah, I need to uh, get that one, get that one done. Uh, Parade, uh, great filler game. Um, Super Skill Pinball, which I do like, really like the concept of. Uh, it goes on a little bit too long. Uh, Hanabi Koji, one of the best ever. Uh, Flea Market, massively underrated game. I mean, I don't understand why this one is so poorly received. It's actually really good fun. Um, Alice's Garden, polyomino game done fantastically. Uh, Air, Land and Sea, we have Fleet the Dice game. Um, Botswana, um, this is going to be reprinted soon, I believe. Um, we've got For Sale, you know, one of the absolute classics, one of the pillars of my collection, I suppose. Um, Battle Line, uh, A Universal Truth. This is a really cool multi-use card game. And Condottier really has become um, one of my favourite and go-to games. Below this, again, more family weight games with Fearsome Flaws, um, another Freedom and Freeze game, if you can tell by the double F alliteration there. Uh, Theurgy. This one is one that didn't really resonate with me. Um, area control game. Uh, Nefertiti, more bidding there. Um, Awkward Guests, which is a great deduction game. Uh, Cartographers, we've got Pergamon, uh, Karuba, and Miyabi. These are from the Habi, uh, Habba uh, line. Let's keep going then. So below this, we have the Quacks of Quedlinburg, I believe with one expansion inside. We've got the Favour of the Pharaoh. So this is actually a Tom Lehman um, dice rolling game, like a Yahtzee variant, but with loads of player powers and things you can acquire. Um, I'm surprised this one didn't take off because it actually has quite a lot of things that tend to be popular. So maybe there is, um, you know, this is going to be a bit of a sleeper and there might be a reprint or something which will inject some life into it. A Savannah Park hits the table, table often, often for me. We've got Mysterium. Now this has my copy of Detective Club in it as well. Um, if you want a Dixit variant style game, um, this is a kind of my go-to box. Uh, Marrakesh Concept, which is another party game. Uh, First and Roll, which is an American football style game. And Sheriff of Nottingham. This is the, is it the first edition or second edition? I think it's the first edition with the expansion. And the final couple of shelves here with Ship Shape. Uh, can't Stop, we have The Bunk, uh, Fantastic Factories, Dice Miner, Five Minute Mystery, uh, Cryptid, Tumbletown, Martinique, and Psychic Pizza Deliverers Go to the Ghost Town, which I didn't really like. And below that, we have the final few with Get On Board, uh, Patchwork, Rapido, which is brilliant um, kind of pushy luck game, uh, Shanghaian, Hiroba, Hashi, and next station london and that's it that's all of my games here if you've got any questions or want to kind of view content on any of these then um please leave a comment or go check out my content because um you know i'm sure i've done videos on most of these in some capacity and uh, for everybody else please uh, be sure to hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other content too but for everybody else i'll see you next time on chairman of the board Bye bye